Anthony Padilla will spend the day with anyone, diving into worldviews and absorbing subcultures. So today, we're gonna dive into his subculture. That's right, so Cam and I are gonna flip the script on Anthony and put him in the hot seat and see what it's like to spend the day with the guy who spends the day with everybody. Let's do it. We don't, we don't need to use it, let's do it. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us today. We really Absolutely. love having you here. This is like huge, okay? You are like YouTube, like gold. Royalty. This is huge, are you kidding me? Lauren and Cameron. My jaw was to the ground while watching the entire Love is Blind series. I mean, you guys were, you guys were incredible. I mean, it is an honor for me. Billy's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And you know, you had us on your channel, of course, so we mm -hmm. thought we'd return the favor, kind of flip the screen. Yeah. and basically steal your format. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm glad I'm glad I made it easy for you. I'm going to put you in the hot seat now and ask ooh, you a question. This, right. this seat's starting to feel like a little crispy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it gradual, okay? It's like a frog in hot water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll warm it yeah. up a little bit. Warm it yeah. up. We'll start uh -huh. off with some softballs, some hard balls, some curveballs. Yep, That's yep. And then the curveball that comes around and hits me in the back and stabs me in the back is great. Let's do oh, it. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing like that. So everyone knows that you are the guy that spends the day with everyone else. So we want to spend right. the day with the guy who spends the day with everyone. I spend the day with the guy that spends the day with, with everyone. everyone. I like it. I like it. It rolls off the tongue. What inspired you to come up with that format for a show? I mean, initially it started out of an out of a necessity but then also as a joke where right when i left smosh which was a comedy duo that i co-created i i left that brand and i found myself genuinely wanting to know like what is it like to be a youtuber at the year in the year it was 2017 so i'm like what does it mean to be a youtuber in 2017 i haven't done that on my own so i sat down with people other youtubers and learn from them. But it was really tongue in cheek. It wasn't really serious at all. And then flash forward a year later, I was still every once in a while revisiting that. And I sat down with furries. And you know, the idea going into it was like, people are weird. Let's see how weird people are. But sure. you know, going going through that interview, I realized that there is just so much to learn about people. And you know, the more that you, the more questions you ask and the, the more you begin to understand people and the more you can kind of uh, relate and empathize with them. And it just, it really, it hit me different. One of the things I really liked about your interview style is you're very empathic with the people that you have on there. And they're people from very diverse backgrounds, interests, things that really motivate them that people often would probably criticize for being mm -hmm. so different. But I appreciate that you have this very empathic uh, view. When I saw the thumbnails at first, I thought, okay, these seem a little extreme. And then this <laughs> yeah. year, it, was, it was it was much more like you were trying to understand them. So I appreciate it. Yeah. That. It's funny that you bring up the, uh, the thumbnails because a lot of people do say they get turned away because it seems like it's just over the top. Uh, you know, maybe like I'm criticizing the people, but it's almost like you have to make over the top thumbnails on YouTube to to like stay to to be able to like sit against the other outrageous thumbnails. Everyone has raised the bars where everyone's got to have outrageous thumbnails. It kind of sucks, but you know it's kind of a necessity, and I don't I don't mind it if it gets people in to watch it. Sure. Absolutely. So in the vein of like having conversations with all of these different kinds of people, is there a particular conversation that kind of stands out to you in your mind that may have been life changing or changed your perspective? perspective on something that you really weren't expecting to kind of feel that way or oh yeah absolutely there's there's a ton of interviews that I've done that have done that but I think the one that stands out the most is when I sat down with people with dissociative identity disorder I'd only known just kind of the, the very surface level ideas behind the disorder and many people have seen split and then uh, you know mr. robot for example which is a much better example of that but still doesn't quite go into how deep it really is. So sitting down with, with Nin and seeing all these different people portraying their different altars and for example, seeing their little come to the surface, which uh, you know, it's, their, it's, it's a younger identity and just seeing how raw and vulnerable they were. And I felt like it really gave me a chance to empathize with what felt like a snapshot of the, the, the pain and the trauma that 
um, you know, they had been through at some point in their life. And it really hit me in a different way. It was really, really heavy, but I really enjoyed it. That was a really powerful video for sure, seeing how, like we said, they really opened up to you. And, and a lot of people, yeah. they know nothing about dissociative identity disorder. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, uh, what have been some of the maybe long-term effects, kind of playing off what Lauren said of doing these sort of things, have you maybe had some impact on your own life or lives of others that you've known about? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's impacted me in many different ways that have, I feel, uh, improved my life. I feel like it's made me more curious. It's made me want to ask more questions. Whenever I meet someone, I'm, I'm like excited to, to like get down in there and learn about them and what makes them tick. And then at the same time, doing these interviews has helped someone like me who's very, I'm, I'm very, uh, I, have, I have a ton of social anxiety. I grew up so shy that I really didn't have many friends because I didn't feel comfortable talking to people. And doing this series, I've tricked myself into thinking that socializing with people is part of work. And you know, I'm very good at working, so I'll come in and do my work, but I'm actually flexing this, this part of my brain that's forcing me to become more comfortable speaking, communicating, and socializing. Well, I can definitely like relate to that because I always call myself, what is it, an intro introverted extrovert? Or extroverted uh -huh. introvert. Right. So I can definitely relate. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like even doing the type of work that we do, it's like mm -hmm. we're always talking to people, but on the inside, like I'm such a loner. Like I'm, you know, uh -huh. so, I'm so I definitely understand that. Yeah, I, fe I feel like people have been calling that ambivert these days, which is a new, which is a new, yeah, it's a new one that I haven't heard of, but it's, it's, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it gets deep. There's many layers there. Yes. And that was something we bonded about yes. on our first date that we both have this sort of personality quality where we're mm -hmm. introverts by nature, but we can turn on the extroversion when we need to. Speaking of like yeah. outside of your comfort zone and these conversations, has there ever been a conversation that you've had with someone that kind of frightened you or scared you a little bit or made you like uncomfortable and uneasy? I guess the short answer is no, because I feel like once I start to kind of feel that it might get to that point, I'm kind of like, all right, well, I got to get going now. You know, I feel like I've become very good at, at sensing when it might become strange like that. It hasn't, hasn't happened yet though. Just based on these conversations, is there maybe a conversation that changed your perspective on something? Yeah, for sure. I mean, going into uh, my video with furries, I, I came in there with a little bit more of a closed mind. I didn't understand, you know, I, I assumed that all the worst things that people had said about this, you know, disgusting animal, sexual cult, whatever. Well, like, I, you know, if there's enough people saying it, it almost becomes a reality and I just kind of went into that and many others like with the ideas that people have implanted into my head but at the same time I was I was open to, to having my opinions changed and I feel like that's happened almost with every video I've done there's been some something that's changed my opinion overall I think a lot of the criticism stems from fear of the unknown right but once you know about it once you learn about absolutely it, you start to you know, yeah. maybe not that scary anymore. It's, mm -hmm. it's something I can kind of at least yeah. understand as a third party. I feel like if more people would be comfortable taking the time to ask questions and not feel like they should know everything, being able to admit that they're ignorant to, to things and other people and their lifestyles, I, I, I do feel like the world would be a better place if, if everyone were able to just, you know, ask questions first and then you know, reserve their judgment. Speaking of judgment, you know, being a content creator on YouTube, what is like something that you wish that people knew about the life of a YouTube content creator? <sighs> what do you feel like are some of the stereotypes that people have about your life? I feel like you constantly have to evolve. You can't really get too comfortable doing things on YouTube because once people see it once, they kind of, They've already seen it. They don't need to keep coming back for the same thing. I feel like you constantly have to be changing it up. And there have been many stints in my career where I became too comfortable. I didn't want to push myself outside of my comfort zone. And I feel like that's when it kind of becomes clear that it's stale and then you got the views that drop and then you start second guessing yourself and wondering, you know, should I be doing this if, I, if I'm getting stressed out about these things or not performing well and it's this whole kind of thing there. So I've learned to constantly push myself out of my comfort zone. And at this point, I know when I feel really uncomfortable, really nervous about recording something, you know, even sitting down and 
doing I Spend a Day with Netflix reality stars, I was like, I was like, ooh, you know, these people, like, they got big names and like, I've watched them for so long. If it doesn't make me a little nervous to step outside of my comfort zone, then, then I know that I'm not doing enough. I think yeah. that's a great point. A little nerves is good. That means that you care yeah. enough to, yeah. you know. Yeah. Because like, what's the difference between excitement and being nervous? I feel like being excited about something is when you're confident that the results will be positive. And then nervous is when you're not sure. But it's okay to not be sure. Great sense. advice. Yeah. See, that's where you're the king. And always challenge yourself. Always challenge yourself. You know, don't, don't, like getting, getting stagnant, it's kind of the dream to get to a point where you can chill. But if you're not challenging yourself and you're just chilling, then you're not going to continue to evolve. Absolutely. I think that's, that's a good point too, because I think a lot of people do have that vision of getting to a point in their career where they can just chill. They don't have to yeah. stress out about things, but I feel like people should be doing things that they love anyways. Back when I first started, you know, I was like, I was like, there's work and then there's fun. So when I'm working, like I want to get to a point where I can just have fun all the time and not work. And I had this vision in my head that I'd get to a point where I could just chill and like, I'll put in all the hard work and work in 80 to hundred hours a week now. So I could just chill by the time I'm 30 and like live on some beach or something. But I, I found a way to, to merge doing what I love uh, with my work and then I don't ever want to just like chill and turn off my brain. I want to just keep going. I mean, it's exciting, right? To continue making content. Or is there um, something creative that you're looking to do in the near future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I want to keep refining my series and, and speaking with people that require even more nuance and uh, care. But at the same time, I also want to try doing other things. I want to create new series. I shot a documentary about uh, kind of like as an offshoot to an interview I did where I interviewed anime cafe maids, uh, like the, the Americanized uh, kind of uh, lewd version of this Japanese thing. And as an offshoot, I made a documentary about me becoming one of them and doing my own show and performing in a skimpy little outfit with my ass out. And it's going to be very, it's, it's, it's gonna be entertaining, it's gonna be entertaining, but it, it really, I can't wait to release that one because it's really inspired me to, to I, it makes me want to make more documentaries. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I feel like that's, you know, it's kind of like you talking with all these different people. That's almost like the next step, like you going into their, their those world. lives. Yeah, their world. Yeah. That. So that's so awesome. I feel like that's the next natural evolution as well. Which yeah. I Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man, this is great. I learned a lot, even just about you and YouTube and your concepts and how you do it, you and who you are. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was, I had, I had a ton of fun. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Is there anything that you want to plug? I know that you often give your guests that same opportunity. Yeah, I'd say, um, you know, if, if you can make a charitable donation somewhere, even if it's just for a buck or two or five, uh, the government certainly uh, isn't putting all of its energy to, to, to helping the things that I necessarily feel are the most important. So, you know, just got to get out there and, and, and try to help when you can. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank Absolutely. you so much. We appreciate you for Thank hanging you out so with much. us. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, guys. I appreciate both of you.